we'll see if people come in. So, hi, I'm Janet Anderson. I call to order the Town of Lewisboro Planning Board meeting for Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. Uh, I will confirm that Kirsten has started recording this meeting uh, and this meeting is happening via Zoom with live streaming to YouTube on the Lewisboro TV channel. Uh, <clears throat> the public can view the meeting via Zoom or YouTube and we have confirmed that the YouTube feed is active and working. In accordance with the governor's executive orders, no one is at our usual meeting location at 79 Bowden. Although at this point, this might be a lot more usual than the old meeting room. I have confirmed with Kirsten, our planning board administrator, that the meeting has been duly noticed and legal notice requirements fulfilled. Joining me on this Zoom conference from the town of Lewisboro are members of the planning board, Charlene and Delicato, Jerome Kerner, I think that's all right now. And, um, but with me, we do have a quorum and thus we can conduct the business of the board and vote on any matters that come before us. Janet, Maureen and Greg have asked for the Zoom meeting ID to be sent to them. So they'll so be they'll on be, in a minute. They'll be on shortly, good. <clears throat> okay, um, so as I indicated before, our planning and wetland consultant, Jan Johannesson, uh, is expected to be a little late, but we have Dave Sessions here um, to cover the matter until Jan can join us. We also have Council um, Judd Siebert, Planning Board Administrator Kirsten Conrad, and the CAC Chair John Wool. Okay, so the Governor's Executive Order number 202.1, which has been renewed, enables the Planning Board to meet remotely and electronically to function on behalf of the town. In accordance with the executive order, we intend to post both the recording and later a transcript of this meeting to the town website. And a recording will be available on the town's YouTube channel. We do have a public hearing scheduled for tonight. That's the only time we expect to take public comments and I will describe the process before we begin that hearing in a few minutes. The public has joined muted and without video until that point. We ask any applicants that are not currently engaging in dialogue to mute their lines. This will help everyone to hear over the inevitable background noises and to ease the recording of our votes, I will pull board members individually. Okay, let's get started. Want me to go ahead, Chair? Well, so um, who's that? That's Stephen Helms with the Helms Group Architects representing Apex Personal Training. Okay, and well, I, so let me, let me introduce it. We, um, the first item on the agenda tonight is a decision for calendar number 0118 PB. Um, this is for Apex Personal Training 20 North Salem Road, Cross River, New York. Uh, and it's an application for a change of use and a waiver of site development plan procedures. And we did receive a new plan um, from Apex indicating the layout of the equipment in the old and new um, portions of their of their uh, their facility. So, okay, Stephen. Okay, good evening, Chair, members of the Planning Board. Thank you for having me. Uh, hopefully, my my clients are on board tonight. Um, I am representing. Hi, good evening. What's up, guys? How are we doing? Hello, John and Skaz. Um, Apex Personal Training LLC. We were before your board last month on the 19th, and uh, there were several items that were discussed and requested. Uh, one particular was the uh, layout of the, of the um, uh, gym equipment, how it relates in the existing and the proposed area. Uh, subsequent to our meeting, we went ahead and revised and updated our drawings, indicating that in the expanded area, which I'll be happy to share my drawing in a moment, um, and then we were also asked to uh, send our drawings, the updated drawings, to the building inspector, Joe Angiello, which we did. And uh, I believe he had submitted a letter dated February 12th or February 11th to your board, stating that he has no objection to the parking deficiency and to the proposed project. Um, that drawing also went to Mr. Johansson for his uh, review. And... Um, 
I'd like to just see if I could share my screen if I can share. Um, give me a moment. Share. <clears throat> <clears throat> there it is. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. This is the uh, drawing with two drawings, drawing one and two. Drawing two uh, represents the basically the equipment that we uh, were. I discussed with my clients what they have as far as inventory and how we wanted to space it out in the in the green area space back in here. And. Um, uh, so that that has been uh, shown uh, for promoting social distancing between the equipment and how we're going to use that space. We also got in, I had a discussion with the building inspector about exits. We do have two separate exits for the building. And this, again, just to remind, this is a permitted use in this, uh, in this zone district. And um, uh, Skaz and John, if you want to add anything to this application, feel free to... Um, Voice your think, uh, no, that's pretty yeah, much it. You know, we need the space to, you know, to separate, you know, distance our clients. Um, they, you, you know, the board requested a, a COVID footprint, and uh, that's our COVID footprint. That's kind of how we think we need to do business, I guess. Okay, great. Um, I, I think it is pretty clear. Um, thank you. And I think the other thing that we are still waiting on is the um, <clears throat> Westchester County Department of Health approval, but I believe that is a condition of the resolution. So um, unless anyone has any questions on the plans, I think we can stop sharing and ask Dave to briefly tell us the highlights of the resolution that is in front of the board. Excuse me, Chair. That letter is on file from the health department from yeah, Delroy it's, Taylor. It's really stating as long as the Meadows has no objection yeah. to this project, uh, they don't have any objection. So that is in on the record in, in the files. And happy I do have a question, there. Janet. Okay. Uh, I appreciate uh, the addition of the equipment in the green area, but I'm wondering why the note on there says turf field. Yeah, is that's that normal? Flooring. Or, that's that's just the flooring. That's the I understand. Purpose. Is that is that typical for uh, gym equipment? Uh, yeah, it's I mean, either that, rubber or it's either rubber flooring or um, turf flooring, and it was just cheaper to go turf. To be completely honest with you, the one inch rubber flooring is just it's expensive. expensive. And you it's, have that in the yellow area, right? So yeah, the rubber flooring all throughout here. Yeah, and it was just okay. aesthetic, just the kind of put our logo in the middle and kind of make it look like it's a, it's just a different vibe, a different look, so to speak. Well, I understand. It just uh, threw me off uh, I, because I had been thinking that, that that could be a team team sport area, which would probably double the occupancy in terms of number no, of people. No There's no room for that. Yeah, we'll have equipment around the whole, you know. No, I know that. Term. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, so we should have the that letter should be on there from Westchester Health. We should be good to go. Yeah. That's all. We also filed for a demolition permit to, 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 to keep this project moving forward. Um, uh, that is has been submitted uh, this past week to the building inspector. Okay. Yeah, um, would you like me to stop sharing the drawing at this point? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Got it. Okay. And I... Unless anyone has any other questions, I'll ask Dave to go through the uh, the resolution. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of whereas is most of them are pretty pretty standard. Um, really, highlights of the project is um, the change of use, obviously, from professional office to the training facility. Um, there are no physical changes to the exterior in, outside of the building. Uh, they basically just want to expand, um, uh, you know, the interior. Uh, we did need to get, or they did need to get permission uh, from the Meadows for the increase in the flow. And that's what we were talking about with respect to the health department. Uh, so the county health department does need to officially sign off. I know we've had some indications that they're comfortable with it. Um, to my knowledge, we haven't actually gotten anything in writing from the health department, but it sounds like it's forthcoming. Um, I'm sorry, to cut you off. I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm pretty sure 
Yeah, we that's have, We got it. the letter from the health department and the Meadows both signed off. I think Stephen has, the, I'm pretty sure we sent that. Is that is that right, Stephen? You have that letter? Yeah, I have that letter. Uh, this is when we started. I have to, let me give me a moment. Uh, uh, let's see. Based on the information provided in the above attachment and the unused capacity at the Meadows at Cross River uh, Sewer Works, the department has no objection to the proposed actions. It's Delroy Taylor, PE Associate Engineer, WCHD. Now, this goes back when we did the first one. Yeah, we already sent out the first meeting, I'm pretty sure. Exactly. Yeah. And we have the letters from the Meadows confirming they have no objection to the... Uh, the All right, just in case, um, or... To make sure we have it, could would you mind resending that uh, letter to us, and that will um, that will just you know make sure the file is complete. Sure. Thank yep. You. Good. Thank you. Um, there is a uh, there's a shortfall on parking with respect to the use. Um, I think we needed per code sixty seven parking spaces, so there's an about eleven space deficiency. Uh, but the fact that there's we're incorporating shared parking into this into the situation, I think um, I think we should be covered in that respect. Um, and as far as the uh, you know the, the whereas is again, as I mentioned, they're pretty pretty standard. Um, we talked about orchard. Everything else is pretty pretty standard stuff. So um, I think we're in good shape, Janet. Great. Thank you. Um, so I would look for a, a motion to approve the resolution that was previously distributed to all of us about um, to for a change of use permit approval and the waiver of the site plan procedure. I would make that motion. Okay, thank you, Charlene. Do I have a second? Oh, Jerome's waving, you're muted, but. Um, second, don't we have to close the public hearing before the vote? Oh, my goodness. Yes, I think we don't have an open public hearing on this one. This one is, um, that was part of- You're the not in a public thing. hearing right now. You're not in a public hearing. I'm right. sorry. Yeah, but yes. that's part of- that's Part of the waiver. Right, so I second the motion. Okay. But thank you for, for staying alert to this. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, is there any further discussion? Mm. If not, I will pull the board, um, so. I guess Charlene? Yes. Uh, Greg? Yes. Maureen? Yes. <clears throat> Jerome? Oh, you're muted, but I see a hand wave, so we'll say yes from that. And I also am yes, so the motion has carried. Um, the resolution is approved, and um, you're off to the to to an expanded area, so that's great. So thank you, thank you very much, guys. Right, thank you, all your thank time. you, everyone, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll see you guys in here, right? <laughs> <laughs> I get my exercise snow shoveling. Okay. Um, <laughs> the next item on the agenda is a public hearing. It's a continuation of a public hearing that opened in December 2020. Oh, sorry, I should tell you what it is. It's Gossip Brothers Nursery. Calendar number 03-20PB, calendar number 3720WP. Um, Gossip Brothers is at 1202 Route 35 in South Salem, New York. Uh, and this is an application for a site development plan, approval of wetland permit activity approval um, for an existing nursery. So again, this um, public hearing opened in December 2020, continued to January and again to tonight. It was really pending the ZBA review and I understand that the January um, ZBA meeting was canceled. So there's a limited amount to what I believe we can do tonight. Although we did get a new submission um, with some parking information, some limited information. So um, I don't know if anyone wants to review that or up oh, and sorry, it's a public hearing. Let me get my. Um, so we will now start the public hearing. The purpose of this public hearing is for the board to hear the concerns and comments of the public. Comments should be addressed to the planning board, not to the applicant. 
A public hearing is not meant to be a dialogue. And in general, the board will not respond to comments at the public hearing, but the board will of course take public comment uh, into consideration as we continue to review the application. Again, for the record, because of executive number, executive order 202.10, we are not meeting at a common location. We are holding the public hearing via video and telephone in accordance with executive order 202.15. We invited public comments by email before the meeting. The public can comment during the meeting by sending an email to planning at lewisboro.gov.com. And in addition, the public can speak at the meeting. In order to do that, raise your Zoom hand by clicking on the raise hand icon at the bottom of the screen. And I don't believe we have anyone on the phone, but if you are on the phone, you can press asterisk nine. Okay, so... Um, does anyone wish to speak at the public hearing? I don't see any hands raised. And um, Kirsten has let me know that she has not received any com uh, comment letters since the one from the neighbors that was very much in support of this application. So with that, um, is there, is there anything from uh, that any of the um, applicants, applicant representatives wish to speak on this? Yes, good evening. I'll be brief and then I'll turn it over to Tim Cronin. Uh, as everyone participating tonight and everyone in town and beyond knows, the Gossett family has been operating a, an existing nursery at this site for many, many years. It is a legally non-conforming use. Uh, and we're here because we're proposing, in addition to continuing the nursery use, uh, we're proposing to establish an accessory winery as a special permit use. Uh, and, uh, it, uh, and we're here because the, the non-conforming nursery use never had an approved site plan from the planning board. Uh, so we were here to get that done. So essentially, Tim Cronin's site plan, proposed site plan, is, is, is for the most part an as-built plan showing the existing structures and improvements that have been there for many years. And, and we all know work very well in terms of traffic and, and parking and, and all the other issues. Uh, the only major changes to our proposed new improvements include and then they're related to the winery accessory use, an installation of a water treatment system and a wastewater holding tank. Uh, we will be before the, the zoning board tomorrow evening uh, for a public hearing on our special permit application for the winery accessory use. Uh, we meet all of the standards under section 220-43.6. Uh, and uh, we're also going to be seeking tomorrow night a, a setback variance for the office trailer. Uh, so, Tim, do you want to jump in and describe any of the new submission? You're muted, Tim. Better? Now we can hear you. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, my name is Tim Cronin, and my office put together the plan that uh, is the action this evening. Uh, the plan hasn't changed much since the earlier submissions, uh, except we've done a little clarification on some of the parking spaces, some of the truck maneuvering, and uh, some of where the bulk storage uh, areas are going to be for the various products that Gossett Nursery sells. But at this point, you know, in speaking with Jan Johannesson, uh, I think we've addressed his comments and pending a, hopefully a uh, positive uh, return from the zoning board, we'll be back here next month for what we believe will be our site plan approval. I think that's correct. Um, so I, again, I don't see any uh, comments from the public um, and um, I don't know if I don't see any questions here. I think we do, um, need to continue the public hearing until March 16th. 
And we have uh, already asked in our January meeting, we asked John to prepare a resolution. So we should be um, set to go unless there's anything uh, unexpected that happens at the ZBA. Unless anybody has anything else, I think we're good. Um, so, um, I right. think uh, that- uh, Janet, I would just say, remind the board or remind the board and the public that at the last meeting, the board did adopt a secret negative declaration, uh, finding that the uh, special use permit and the proposed accessory winery use will not have a significant effect on the environment. Um, the board did uh, advise Kellard Sessions to begin preparing a, a resolution. We got a little hamstrung by virtue of the uh, adjournment of the uh, ZBA meeting. Um, and the public hearing is really being kind of kept open at this point, really more for housekeeping purposes, but uh, I would suggest we just carry everything over uh, to March. Let's see what the ZBA does. And um, we should have a resolution um, with regard to what the planning board needs to do relative to this application at the March meeting. Great. Okay, so unless anybody has anything else, I think we have are done with this. Okay, thank you very much and um, good luck yeah, tomorrow thanks. night and, and uh, we'll see you March 16th. Okay, the next item on our agenda is, um, is a wetland violation, um, calendar number 02-19WV, calendar number 60-19WP, calendar number 14-19SW, the Coleman residence at 12 Redcoat Lane, Wacabuck, New York. Um, and I don't see anyone on the, oh, Michael. Okay, sorry. Um, so um, I think the last that I saw on this was that Jan um, Johansson had said he needed some more information in order to really close out the violation and the permit. Correct. Uh, and, and one of the things he needs is uh, the, for the as-built survey, which we had submitted, but he wants it to be updated or revised, I should say, to show the as-built features, including the drainage. And with the snow cover, uh, that has been relentless for the past uh, two months. Uh, the surveyor has not been able to locate the outlets. There's four outlets, is my understanding. So we're hoping that the snow cover melts and before next uh, your next meeting, we can have that as-built survey updated to show the drainage. Yeah, there, there were actually four, um, I think there were four outstanding items um, that we needed to close it out, um, if I may. Yeah. Um, yes. Certification letter from the engineer uh, certifying that all work and drainage was installed. Obviously, they need to uh, wait for the snow melt to make sure that that's in, in, in order. Uh, in addition to the as-built that Michael, that Michael just mentioned. Um, as-built planting plan, uh, that was prepared by the, the landscape architect, which is probably in a similar situation with the snow. Right. And then the, um, the notice of termination uh, that was supposed to be submitted to the state. Now, Michael, maybe you can tell us the, the NOT probably wasn't, I'm, I'm surmising that it wasn't submitted yet because he hasn't been able to review what's in the, what's in the ground. That's correct. Yeah. So, I mean, and the costs, the costs of construction were already submitted and reviewed and accepted. So, yeah, so it's these four items that are really uh, snow, dependent, <laughs> snow melt dependent, right? Um, that we're waiting for. Okay, so I was thinking we should adjourn this until March, although uh, perhaps with the snow, is this, something that we should adjourn until April because to get it in in time to get reviewed 
Um, that's fine. I'll leave that up to the board. I don't think that snow is going away anytime soon. Okay, so April, you're okay. Everybody's all right with that? Sort of nods. I mean, we'd like to keep um, these things moving, and but I understand it's if if things can't get done and and turnaround can't happen, we'll we'll say it goes to April. Okay, thank yeah, all, you. All the all the site work is done. It's just yeah. a question of, of documenting it. Okay. And um, Judd, I get it. if jump in if that's a problem, but I think no, not at all. I think it makes sense. Yeah. Great. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, the next item on our agenda um, is calendar number 01 dash 20. Um, WV calendar number 12 20 WP. This is the Valencia residence at 1196 Route 35, um, South Salem. They have asked for this to be adjourned because they can't get things done because of the snow. Um, so, again, um, now this one, we have been waiting on some items since before the snow. So I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. Um, uh, Jan, yeah, if I may. Yes, um, please. I, I've been in contact with Jan. I'd ask, it, why don't we put this over to March and Jan and I will contact uh, the Valencias in uh, an effort to move this. Okay. Yeah. That's... I know they're they're saying some of it's snow, but I think there's more than just the snow that we need to deal with. So thank you very much. Um, and I, uh, and David, I'm sure you will let uh, Jan know that as well. I will. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next item on our agenda is a site development plan review. Um, this is calendar number 06-17PB. The Wolf Conservation Center, Buck Run in South Salem, New York. Um, this is an application for a site development plan approval, a special use permit, and subdivision associated with a private nature preserve. Um, so I think perhaps the first thing is that um, to give a, a quick site walk report, um, we did have a uh, the board did have a site walk on February 13th in uh, 2021. The attendees included the planning board members, Greg, Charlene, and me. Uh, CAC members, John Wolf, Eileen Nadelson, Val Andes, Mary Shaw, Joe Tanzi. And there were also representatives from the uh, Wolf um, Wolf Conservation Center, including Spencer Wilhelm, Matthew Gironda, and there was a representative from the architecture firm. Um, so we uh, met there and parked and walked downhill towards the proposed parking area, um, which was a relatively flat area behind one buck run. We could see the neighbor's fence, which we were told was close to the property line and we could see the house beyond. So we asked and it was described how close to the property line, the parking lot turn or, or um, arc drive area would be. And we asked about the lighting that would be in the parking um, lot area. We then walked back up the road towards the house where the new um, building the new facility will go. Um, as we walked up, we were told how the road would be widened and it would be cut into the hill and the sidewalk would be added along the uphill side. Um, the existing house has uh, quite a wooden, wooded yard and we asked if many of the trees would be cut to allow the solar uh, panels on the house or on the new facility to function. Um, and we were told that many of the trees were dead and that new colorful and low plantings would be installed in place of some of the, the trees that would have to come down. We then walked up the driveway um, of the current house that's there. Uh, we could see the corners of the new building staked. Um, and it was 
clear how the proposed building both fit into the slope of the hill and we could see the upside slope where the, uh, which would provide an amphitheater area. Um, as we walked back towards the parking area, we asked about the ground disturbance for the cabins in the composting toilet area. Um, we were told the cabins will all go on concrete piers. And while the composting toilet will have a lower level, um, it will fit into the slope. So when we heard that there was rel relatively small amount of disturbance in that area, we agreed we did not go to the top of the hill to see this area. So we concluded the, um, the site walk at that point. I don't know if any other members of the board that were there need to, would like to speak anything more about it. You mentioned it was about 20 degrees. <laughs> yes, it was, it was cool. Um, and, um, but, but other than that, I mean, I think it gave us a chance to see uh, a little bit more of the slope, understand a little bit more about where things were fitting. Um, and I think seeing, we had some discussions about how close neighbors were and we saw that one neighbor. So I think it was useful for that. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we have gotten some, um, uh, some progress on this and that um, in January, we agreed to issue seeker notices, um, but I believe we were waiting for a long EAF form part one in order to do that. Um, Correct. So, so yeah. I think um, perhaps it's time to ask um, the, the applicant about uh, any updates or comments they have for us. So good evening, Chairwoman, members of the board for the record. My name is Janet Garris. I'm a partner with Del Bello, Janelle and Weingarten, Wise and Whitaker um, here on behalf of the Wolf Conservation Center. Sorry, I missed you all at the site visit. Uh, we were under an isolation order. We had COVID in the house, uh, but everybody is okay. Um, so we did, uh, we did receive Jan's very lengthy memo, Jan and Joe's very lengthy memo, and uh, we just got that on Friday. We are in the process of going through that now to respond to those things. Um, I thought that you had a long form EAF from us in connection with this. Um, so if we did not get you something that you're waiting for, I apologize for that. We will take a look and uh, see if that EAF needs to be updated since we were last, since it was last submitted. Uh, but I don't think much has changed since then. So I will take a look at that and we'll certainly get it back to you. Okay. Um, I would say that at the site walk, we also did see <clears throat> some, um, uh, I think, I think we did, I think Spencer, was showing us some pictures of the camping units and some other things that might be useful to have um, submitted um, before our next meeting as well. Okay. Okay, are there any other um, comments, questions that anyone has. I think we also did, um, in January, we already said we would refer this to the building inspector and to the fire department. And I believe that's moving forward um, because it will be important to get feedback from both of them on this. We will reach out to them directly as well to see if we can set something up to uh, perhaps walk them through the application and help them, um, you know, assimilate everything and try to turn some comments around. Okay. So I think that's the majority here that we were, um, you know, to get Seeker going, we do need the um, long EAF part one. And that's, um, and then anything else you want to submit, I think we're, we're, anxious to move this forward as I'm sure you are. 
yes, we are. We're excited to be here. So we will turn those things around as quickly as possible. And we will start to respond uh, to uh, Jan and Joe's comments as well. Great. Yeah, and just one thing, Jan. Um, yes, do you want to go through yeah. some of that, Dave? I don't know. Um, probably not necessary to go through our, our comments, but just a general uh, comment is that there are quite a few comments. Um, it's probably, it would probably be beneficial if we actually met with Matthew and or somebody else, Bibbo, just to go through them, whether it's on mm -hmm. Zoom, you know, um, just to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page. You know, there's, there are a lot of comments here and they might be misinterpreted here and there. So the best way to do it is obviously either get on the phone, get on a Zoom, get into the a room together. And, uh, and go through them one by one, just to make sure that we're all on the same page with everything. That would be great. Yeah. And, and I said, oh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. The, uh, yeah, just, the, I know you mentioned Jan um, Janet before, but the, uh, uh, you know, we're, we are waiting on a review from the building inspector on zoning compliance and fire code. That's, that's obviously important. Um, so the, the, the quicker you can accelerate that and the fire department for that matter, those are, those are key issues. Okay. Dave, it's very confu very confusing with two Janets. Every time somebody <laughs> yeah. said Janet, I jumped before. <clears throat> uh, okay. I see Jerome has his hand up. Yeah. It, it's kind of a general question, but I'm wondering, uh, if there's an anticipated, uh, construction schedule. And part B of that is, uh, is the financing in place? And uh, is, is it going to be fundraising? I mean, uh, I guess the, the behind the question is, is a, a question of whether or not the budget has been established and uh, is in line with what you anticipated, or might there be any significant changes that might happen uh, once that uh, process is completed? So it's like a three-point question. Yep, so Spencer's with me this evening and I'll put him on the hot seat <laughs> in terms of construction schedule. I know that um, you know we anticipated as soon as approvals were granted that we would try to get in the ground. Um, I think that there has been or <clears throat> there will be a significant fundraising effort, but I also think that they've worked very hard on this particular design and uh, coming up with the design and a budget uh, so that this project can be constructed. So Spencer, I don't know if you want to add some more detail to that. That's not working, Spencer. That's not working. audio is off. Yeah. yeah. Now we can't hear you at all. Oops, now you're yeah. muted. Now you're muted. Spencer here? Nothing. He's here. Nothing. Oh, there he is. He's talking, but Sorry. Spencer, we can't. <laughs> All right. So who's this, happened, this happened last time, too. American Sign Language here we need. All right. Charlene has a question, perhaps. Well, yes. Um, well, you want me to fill in for Spencer? Oh, Dean, there you are. Sure. Go ahead, Dean. Yeah, well, we have a, a, a good portion of the money raised, and we're pretty confident that we'll get the rest by the time we are uh, starting construction, we cost estimated. We have a history with uh, previous designs, as you know, we've been fully cost estimated out and we're pretty sure, we're, we are sure it'll fit within the budget we have and what, we, what we're able to spend. The only thing we're doing now, which Spencer would tell you about, we're making choices, sort of um, we're on the options phase and evaluating the options, but within the budget that we know that we can we can make. So this will get built. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that's that's um, good news, Dean. Thank you for jumping in on that. Uh, Charlene. In, in line with what Jerome was saying, I believe at one point uh, in, in one document, I read that you'll provide a uh, business plan. And if so, that would be very helpful to all of us. I think uh, because there's going to be a lot of uh, dis uh, um, property disturbance. And I think that uh, it would be um, advisable if we could have um, a better understanding of how 
you're going to continue on the budget with that and God forbid something happens and you can't continue it, uh, will there be money put aside um, in order to um, mitigate any um, things that you've done already? So we're working on that plan for you. I think that there's there were some operations materials that you were looking for in a plan. Um, Spencer's working on that. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if uh, can't afford to build it, we're not going to get a building permit. So. Yeah, but I think also, uh, to, along with what Shirlene, <clears throat> some of the questions that were, um, came up at the, site walk that would be helpful to have documented were things like um, how often would lights be on at night? You know, how often would the, would the cabins be occupied? Is that a one night? Is that a one week stay? Is that, you know, and so we got some of the answers at the site walk, but I think it helps to have it. Um, that of course is not a minuted or documented meeting. Yeah. And it helps to have that kind of information. It's more appropriate to come in through a board. So that would be, you know, just. Um, right. we're, and we're working on that operations manual. So perfect. we'll get that to you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, we, uh, we are starting to update that. Um, you know, going through the comments, it didn't say anything about a future use uh, manual. So um, we will make sure that those uh, comments are put uh, in detail. Great, thank you very much, um, Spencer. I think, again, it was interesting to hear about some of those things on the site walk, but this is, the, the board meeting is the more appropriate forum to have them um, sort of documented for posterity. Yep, understood. Okay. Um, great, is there anything else that um, we want to ask of this group? Or or um, any more assignments to give them. I will say thank you again for allowing us on the site. I did feel like the site walk gave me, um, you know, while I visited before, never really thought about this, the new building there. And this is, um, it was very helpful to see. So thank you for allowing us out. And I do know um, that you also invited, you know, other members of the board to um, have a chance to review it as if as necessary. So, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Before, before we before we leave, um, and Matthew knows this all all too well. I I would just encourage um, the applicant. We've got Westchester County Health Department approvals that are needed. Um, DEP stormwater pollution prevention plan approvals that are needed. Um, a freshwater wetland permit from DEC is also needed. Yeah, uh, we're working on all those dizzying. <laughs> oh, yeah, as well as DOP. So, you know, I, from our from all of our private work, we all know that sometimes the towns uh, come through with their approvals a lot sooner than these outside agencies. And then the outside agencies want additional things addressed and then things change. So as long as you're, yeah, you're digging into those outside agencies, because at the end of the day, that's probably your, um, so that's probably Dave, your you cut out a little there. I, I think. Can you hear me, Jen? Yep. Okay, now yeah. I can. I, I, maybe I was the only one, but I wasn't hearing for a bit there. Oh. We all heard. Um, okay. There's an over under on the timing for the, uh, DEP approval. <laughs> well, what's, just, what, uh, what's the over? Uh, I'd take the over any day. <laughs> you can I always put the, uh, you can always set the wolves on them. So. Hi, hi well, everyone. Oh, Matthew oh, Karanda oh. from Bibo Associates here. Thank you, Dave. Um, yes, we are uh, fully aware and, and going down the, the, the path of, of uh, obtaining all those outside agency permits. Right now, we're actually completing water testing throughout the site on all the existing wells to identify um, the most suitable source and possibly alternative uh, uh, well sites. Um, as you know, we developed the SWIP with the understanding that we will need DEP SWIP approval and contemplated all their requirements on that as well. But you know, your suggestion of sitting down and having a meeting to discuss our design so we can sort of be on the same page before we um, go down full bore with the, DEC, the DEP, I think would help. 
Yeah, absolutely. And as you know, Matt, sometimes, you know, certain municipalities will give you one direction. DEC will give you another and DEP will give you a third. Yes. So you're, you're torn in, in three different directions. So if, if you're, a, if you, if we could put our heads together as far as what DEP needs and wants, uh, you know, it's, it's just better for the overall project. Beneficial, absolutely. Okay, anything further from anyone on this? Okay, again, um, you know, we're, we're all excited to see you back and, and have a plan. So um, we'll look forward as you know when when the next submission comes in um i did not confirm this but um i believe that the submission date is february 26th for the next for march meeting so that might be a little tight yeah. so we might see you in april that sounds good yeah we'll target we'll get, that. we will get working on things okay. right away Great. About the uh, circulation for lead agency, you had mentioned the, the updated EAF. Um, there was a discussion at the previous meeting about a subdivision plat as well being required. Will that be necessary for circulation of lead agency or just the updated EAF? Um, I'm looking we're, at we're, And we're waiting on some field work for that. So. That's we are we know we need to get you that updated plat, but there's some field work that needs to be completed in order for us to be able to get that to you. And I, you know, with snow on the ground makes it difficult. Um I, I don't want to tread on uh Dave's territory, but I think that if we have basically the uh the, you know the contours of the basically the site plan and the site development. Uh, materials, um, the subdivision is somewhat secondary. Um, so I think that coupled with the EAF would be appropriate for circulation, you know, for lead agency at this point. Okay, great. Okay. Agree, yeah. Judd. Okay. I also, want to, I also want to compliment Spencer on his t-shirt. I don't know if those are for sale. I, I wore it specifically for, you know, yeah. online. The, wall, yeah. the world needs walls. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. <laughs> Building the brand. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, thank you. If, thank you. If there's nothing more, I think we move on to the next um, agenda item. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is a wetland permit review. Um, it's calendar number 60-20 WP. The McGinnis Residence, um, 17 Schoolhouse Road, Wakabak, New York. Uh, this is an application for the construction of a greenhouse, a covered dining area, a spa, and an extension of, a, of an existing um, patio. So. Good evening, uh, Madam Chairman and members of the board. Um, I'm Jerry Barrett. I'm the site planner for the project. I believe uh, with me on this call will be the uh, project attorney, Michael Serignano, our project engineer, Alan Pilch, and the project architect, Patrick Crow. Um, so um, if you will, I will, I will go through uh, pretty much the plan of, to give you guys a summary. Uh, we had had an opportunity to talk with the town planner and discuss some of the issues and try to, try to come to a try to come to a point that maybe we're working, all working together to try to get to the same point. So um, I'll start um, by sharing my screen. So let me know if that comes up. It's up. Everybody see that? Yep, I can see it. Okay, so the McGinnis property is a 17 Schoolhouse Road. Um, in the upper left corner of the page, we're showing the entire 23 acre site. Um, the development on the property is really focused um, on the southern, on the southern uh, part of the, the site. The north is going straight that way to the left. Um, 
the board will remember this project. Um, the, there's a, a main residence um, in this area of the property. And um, then there is some accessory structures that are right here that were subject to permits. These are the accessory structures right here. Um, and so has the board will, will, will remember there was a land paddock in this area that occurred in the wetland buffer. We moved it out of the wetland buffer um, and then moved forward with other um, improvements to the property, including some patios and some landscaping and some mitigation around the property. Um, so what this project is uh, proposing is to um, essentially um, construct some outdoor improvements on the property that will really occur in areas that are, I'm just trying to move the screen. Computer's moving slowly. So this is the main residence here. This is the wetland line. This is the 100 foot DEC wetland buffer line. And this is the 150 foot town wetland buffer line. This was the original land paddock. This is the real line driveway. This is the new land paddock. Uh, this is the 50 foot side yard setback. Um, most of the improvements on the property occur along the eastern um, the property edge, which is, it's all wooded on the other side. And that's because I think all the development was, was slated up in this area to get as far away from this wetland line as possible. So these are the two existing accessory structures. There's a stone patio in the back. We just recently installed a patio back here. And then there's about a three or four foot boulder retaining wall coming in this area. The improvements proposed that we're going to see in a minute, it's basically to put a roofed open an open porch right in this area, a little sitting area and a, a fireplace. Um, and then there's a little, uh, a small uh, a, a spa in this area here. So in order to get that to work in there, what we need to do is, um, so this is uh, looking at the back of the house. I just wanna give you guys an idea of what we're talking about when we get into the plans. I think it'll make a lot more sense if we just look at the photos real quick. Um, So this is the back of the house now, the back of the main house. This is the existing activity barn that's here now. That's the new patio we put in. The new activity, the new structure will connect from here to here. It's going to come across. It's going to come across from here and it's going to come across. And this is going to be a covered roof now. And what I think is significant here is a lot of this improvement that we're doing occurs over this existing driveway. This driveway is going to get pulled back this way um, so we can get a parking cord in here and allow for Basically, the new structure goes right here. Um, and what's happening, you can see that, this, as I said, there's a, there's a low wall here now. This is the property line. Uh, beyond this, it's all wooded. Um, it comes over. There's about a three-foot wall here. Uh, now, we're going to have to extend this wall back and to the front this way in order to flatten the area out to allow the improvements to get put in. So now I'll go to the site plan. So again, this is the existing residence. These are the existing activity barns. You can see this is where the connection, the open covered porch is. So if you were looking at it from the, from the street, what you would see is you'd see the existing house, which is right here. That little corner is right here. And then you'd see this structure, which is this. But what you're seeing in the back here, that taller thing, that's this activity barn. But it's basically this area here. This area here is gonna be outdoor dining area. There's gonna be a fireplace and a grill. And then there's gardens around it. And the existing driveway is right in this area here. So you can see the existing driveway where the, where the new work is being proposed. That red dashed line is the existing driveway. It comes all the way back in here and like that. So we're taking what's now the parking court and we're going to move it over here. This is the new four foot wall we'll be installing that will come in and run the length to bench the site down in order to get everything in there. So this is, the, this is the, the new activity area, open area. It's an open pavilion type concept. This is a small addition. Um, it's a storage shed. The pool equipment's actually gonna go in here. This is the existing patio that's there now. And then we're going to be putting this uh, small um, uh, uh, spa in this area that will overflow down into a lower catch pool to create a waterfall type of effect. We will need to install a small wall here another small wall here. We've been working with Alan Pilch to pick up the storm with the new stormwater. 
which Alan says is not really a lot because a lot of this again is happening over the existing driveway. Nonetheless, he's got an infiltration system in this area here. So that kind of gives you an idea of, 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 of what's happening. If you were looking at this from the property to the east and you were looking back, this would be the back. That's that sitting area we're talking about. This is the addition to the shed and this is where the grilling area would be, which would be right in this area here. And of course, if you were looking at it from the back and looking back toward the building, you'd see the existing activity barn. You'd see the existing studio, which is this. That's what this is, that new, um, that new uh, uh, storage shed that's gonna house the pool equipment. That's what this would be. The retaining wall to the side of it is what's here. Um, and then looking back, you would see the, you would see this, there's a covered porch here. This is an open porch. These two things here are just covered roofs, that little black thing. It's just little covered roofs. Um, and then you'd be look, looking back to the area connecting the buildings. So that's what's happening in terms of the architecture and um, uh, the project attorney and the project uh, architect went to the zoning board and they got 10 variances and we, note them here the board already has the resolution of approval for that and again the premise for the variance says were because this is really the only developable the, the only developable portion of the property in terms of trying to get as far away from the wetland as possible here's the wetland line here's the 150 foot buffer line um so that was the premise and the, the zoning board agreed it was logical that we should proceed and we should work in that area um also on this plan, we provide the zoning analysis uh, to explain what happened. Um, we're showing a pool fence that's gonna go around the backyard in this area here. It'll just it'll just encircle this. It's a, it's a very small area. Um, and, um, and then there was also talk that there was a fire pit in the backyard and that's what this was here. And I think that uh, the, the discussion was, you know, can we, can we do something to make this a little uh, a, a little more um, softer, if you will. So we went back and we're going to, about the, we talked about creating more mitigation, giving up lawn area and getting more planting in here. And what can we do for more mitigation? And part of that mitigation was going to be, we're going to take out these Belgian blocks and we're going to take out all this gravel. And we're just going to have a little mulch path around this with some tree stumps, some tree, tree logs to sit on. Um, and we're going to be creating, we're going to be taking out a lot of lawn area and we're going to be we're going to be um, adding uh, adding more planting. We're going to try to see what we can do to provide more mitigation for the for the project. So we did a construction and erosion con control plan. And one of the things we wanted to show on the construction plan and demonstrate what's happening here is, you know, what is the area within the within the grading limit line, if you will. The grading limit line is this black dashed line. And but what is the area within the grading limit line that's within the 150 foot buffer? And what's that disturbance? Because that disturbance number usually indicates if that's, you know, 6,300 square feet, the, the board is usually looking for one to one mitigation or about 6,300 square feet. So we identified what that was in this. We call this subject area one. And then we went to the other part of the property, which we call subject area number two. And this is the this is the portion of the um, of, of the property where we're proposing to uh, to remove the existing lamp pen that was here and replace it with a small greenhouse of similar size. And that's what this would be. This is the existing lamp pen that's there. Uh, it's a similar sized uh, greenhouse structure, kind of a glass with a metal frame type thing, attractive. It will be more centrally located um, in the paddock because there's, the idea is to have kind of almost parterred gardens and the owner likes to grow cut flowers. And so this is gonna be laid out with flowers as part of some of the mitigation. We said, you know what, let's take some of that grass out of that paddock and we're gonna turn this into a little wildflower meadow. meadow. It'll make a nice back, back drop to this. But what we did was we went through this, um, we, we went through this area and we, we provided a, a disturbance summary and we broke it down to what it was in December, 2020 when we first talked to the board and what it is now. And what we come up with is that um, we've, we've identified our total disturbance at about 14,034 square feet. It's not quite, it's not very different from, from the um, initial disturbance, but what is different is um, we only had 7,700 square feet of mitigation um, in December. And now we have 15,000 square feet of mitigation and we're gonna get to that in a minute, but 
what, what we're trying to do is instead of providing a one-to-one -one mitigation impact to mitigation uh, or mitigation to impact ratio, we're trying to provide a two-to-one impact uh, to or, or mitigation to impact area. Um, and the owners felt that they were okay with giving up lawn areas and they thought it might, you know, they got a very big front lawn area. So they thought it might be more intermittent and more cozy to have more plantings in the backyard. So that's where we went and we prepared the wetland mitigation plan for the project. And what we did was we provided a summary on the plan where we, where we identified what was the mitigation we showed in December 20 in December 2020 and th that's what that was these green areas we had the green areas and we had about six or seven thousand square feet this is that meadow that's that wetland meadow uh, the wildfire meadow that I was talking about earlier and um, so what we did was um, we went and you know we show that just in the white circles that was the mitigation that was put in with the previous project that the board will recall that uh, finished up about a year or two ago and then in 2020 we came back in december and we showed the mitigation areas in green and we had about 7500 square feet but since we've been talking to the board about this project and talking with the owners and talking with the town planner and said what could we do and said well let's try to provide more min mitigation um and, and, and make this project so it works for everyone. And that's what we've done. So all these areas you're seeing in yellow, they were previously lawn areas and now they're all gonna be reclaimed to planting. At this point, we just have a, a, uh, a, a typical planting palette that we will be developing a full planting plant for. We just didn't have time to get to that, but we will. Um, but I think what we've shown is we can we can put this extra planting in. I think it could be very uh, attractive. It's going to make the backyard seem a lot cozier. Everything's going to be nestled with plantings. We've got plantings on the eroded stream banks in this area. All this area that was formerly mowed lawn is taken out. This is where that fire pit area is, and you can see that you know we're planting all around that. We're going to we're going to thicken up this area here. We're also going to keep the mitigation that we had proposed previously in 2020, 2020, uh, where we were going to bolster the existing mit mitigation plan. And there was some discussion, that, you know, was that adequate? I'm of the position, the more roots you get into a wetland buffer planting area, the more filtration that you're going to have. It just makes sense. There's more roots. There's, there's more opportunities for pollutants to get bound up in those roots and get converted into the plant mass. Um, but the point was well taken with the board. And so we went back and created all these additional mitigation areas. And so we did it over here. This is the septic area. We're going to be planting the whole back of this. This is kind of a, it kind of slopes down. This is kind of a mound system, septic. Um, and we're also going to be putting more plantings inside the paddock. So what we tried to do is, was, was come up with a, with a plan that we think that could work for the owners and be very attractive, but also address the concerns noted by the board. Um, I don't know if Alan is with us or not. I know he had other meetings, but Alan, if you're here, you jump in. If not, I can uh, certainly jump in here. Um, oh, good. Maybe uh, Alan, you want to explain how you handled the uh, drainage? Yeah, but basically what we've done here is we, um, there, there was a very minor increase in the amount of uh, impervious services. When I calculated the curve number, it increased by one. So in order to attain the, uh, peak rate attenuation for a 25 year storm. What we have proposed is putting in um, subsurface chambers just to the, I guess that's to the west, west of area. the pool area. Uh, since the, um, because the, the septic is in the front yard, it really didn't make sense to put something there. So we really want it in the backyard. So it'd be, so we'd have nothing upgraded to the septic. So what we're doing is picking up runoff from uh, some of the buildings and some of the, um, new patio areas and conveying that into the uh, subsurface chambers and then basically just discharged uh, any excess runoff uh, that is collected to an outlet control structure and basically it runs what it does is it runs through the wetland plantings the mitigation plantings that's uh, on this plan um, what we're able to show as well is that the stormwater management plan uh, as uh, devised, will provide um, peak rate attenuation for all storms up to the 25 year storm. I know there was a concern expressed, well, two concerns. One was you need to do a percolation test. Uh, we'll do one when the, uh, say the snow clears up a little bit and the ground maybe is uh, slightly more thawed. 
but the other comment was regarding the separation distance between the bottom of the chambers and the um, and the groundwater table, which uh, we were able to raise the uh, chambers up by about one foot in elevation, and now have achieved a full three feet of separation between that and the groundwater table. Um, and the chambers are still embedded into the ground, so they're not like sticking out of the ground or anything. You know, the, the relationship of the chamber to the existing grade has been maintained and is, and is in accordance with the stormwater management design manual, but we we're able to do that so as to achieve that full three foot separation between the bottom of the chambers and the, um, uh, you know, and the uh, high seasonal groundwater table, which we observed during our deep hole test that was done during uh, uh, December. And um, as you can see, what we're doing is collecting runoff from some of the new rooftops um, and some of the existing studio and actually some of the drains that are also present uh, in the, um, the new covered areas and putting it into the chambers. So that's how the stormwater management plan essentially works. Alan, can I interject for a second here? Sure. Um, yeah, as long as, the, and I'm sure you're aware of this, the chambers are, is any more than half the chamber um, um, in fill? Um, I don't believe so. I think what you're going to find is that the, uh, it's a fairly level area there and that, um, uh, I know what you're getting at here with regard to it, but I also will say that the, the concern about being in, they're not in fill per se, because the, the chambers themselves are in the, um, you know, they're embedded into the ground still. So you can take a look at that too. But I know the usual concern about fill is that there's going to be a seep that's going to uh, occur. Um, and the chambers are not really there for infiltration purposes, they're for peak rate attenuation purposes as well. Um, so it's something I guess you can review and take a look at. Um, yeah. I'd say that it's, it's at the, let me think, the north end, they're very much embedded at the south end uh, near where the walkway enters. It's probably about half. The yeah. Chambers. Remember, these are the shallow chambers. These chambers are eight, inch, eight and a half inches high. These are the C4s yep. uh, from Paltec. So they're very uh, shallow chambers in the first place. Alan, are the bottom of all the chambers in, in basically virgin grade? Not yes, fast? they are. They're all they're, the they're, they're, they're in virgin ground there. That's correct. Okay. And they're, they're not, they're not, I mean, considering it's a, an eight and a half inch high chamber, they're all still in the, in the ground. Yeah, I'm just I'm just suspecting that um, your perk is going to be pretty slow there. You know, the majority of that site, as you know, is you know pretty shallow groundwater. The soils are not great, um, so you know, depending upon what you what you get for your perk rate, obviously is going to dictate the size of the chambers and how much you need. But we're not there yet. Obviously, we still need to do perks. Right, we we understand that. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, this winter has been a little more challenging, I think, for a lot of people. Yep. So, Alan, I, I can't remember if, um, I think there was some discussion about a, a potential small draw, drawdown of the pool, um, just enough to get past the sort of tile at the top. Would that be coming into this um, chamber as well? Yes, it would. And, and they're, they're large enough to accommodate because it's a pretty small spa that's going in. Right. Okay, good. I, I thought I'd heard that before and I wanted to make sure that was still yes, true. So I know it was addressed in the stormwater report that was submitted. Thank you. Janet? Uh, yes, Jerome. It was mentioned uh, by Jerry that uh, the new construction, uh, the covered dining area and the gazebo are in the area that was the existing driveway. Was that driveway paved or gravel? Gravel. Pardon me? Gravel. Gravel. So there, so there would be uh, additional impervious. Uh, you were, uh, I don't know if that's been calculated because you now have the roof areas that uh, are replacing the gravel. Has that been considered? It, it has. And in the analysis, that's exactly what was considered. Okay. So I have a 
question again. Um, could you remind me what the footing under the um, uh, greenhouse is? Is that on gravel or is that a, a board? What is the bottom there? I think it's a gravel base and it will be set kind of like a pole barn with sonic hoops and with a gravel base. Yeah, I, I thought that's what I remembered and I couldn't find it. Um, so, you know, in the in the shed now that used to be the lamb paddock that is going to get torn down, I think the last time we required that um, no fertilizer or chemicals or pesticides be stored in that area. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the greenhouse now is moved over just a little bit, and obviously I'm not. Um, I, I recognize that you use fertilizer as part of the planting of of things, so I'm not really worried about its use. But I I was wondering, I am I am a little concerned about storing you know bags of fertilizer or pesticide or something there. Is would I think it might be appropriate to use the same signage that was on the old shed um, and maybe ask you not to store, you know, um, bags of fertilizer or chemicals in that greenhouse as well. I, I, think, that, that, I think that's a reasonable request. And I know we're out of the buffer on the other side where we have uh, a few feed sheds and, you know, maybe what we can do is designate an area outside of the buffer. It's just across the driveway in case they need to get to them. So we wouldn't even need to do that. I think we can designate an area on, on this side, um, which is all, you know, it's all close together. Here's the driveway. You just you know, walk over here and you can get your, you know, they can get there. They can keep that stuff right in here with their feed and all the other things that they keep in the shed. Yeah, I think something, uh, it, it was part, partially the wetland buffer and partially the, the gravel substrate that would allow anything that spilled to be kind of go in or that got wet to sort of get in very quickly. So that was my my bigger concern. Um, other than that, I, I think um, I think you did hear us. I'm, I'm happy to see there is a lot more mitigation um, proposed now. I think the other thing we talked about potentially was um, was demarking the wildflower meadow so it wouldn't get accidentally um, uh, mowed or something. But but I do see a lot more plantings in that whole area now. Um, so I don't know. We had had you still considered to plan to put some kind of demarcation there or not? I think we can. I mean, we we already have demarcation out there. Um, that's what these are. These are these six inch, six inch um, pipes embedded into the ground, flush with the ground that demarcates, you know, where the, where the mode lawn ends. And I see no reason why we can't, you know, put them in this, on this line here. And so that line can always be easily established. Um, it's a simple thing to do. And I don't think the owners would have a problem with it um, at all. Great. Okay. Um, so does anybody else on the board, I, can, I can't I can see everybody on the board, but um, I guess I would ask you to speak up if you have any comments or questions. Uh, this is Maureen. I, I have a question. We've probably gone over this before, but just to remind, uh, just remind me, um, the existing activity barn and the existing studio, can you tell me uh, I'm not quite sure I understand the use case of an activity barn. Well, I think it's just a hangout barn, is really what it is. There's some couches in there and there's a little soda. Are there, are there, are there, is there a kitchen in there? I think it's more like a, like a snack bar type thing with a little, like it, it almost, I, I was only in there a couple of times, but it kind of reminded me of like a, a, a like a soda fountain from the old days. You know, it had a little bar with that kind of thing. It's not a full kitchen. It's just, there's a snack bar, there's a large TV. There's like, you know, I don't know if it's a ping pong table. It's that kind of thing. It's, it's, not, it's not a sleeping area. Okay. No, uh, no bathroom? I believe it has a bathroom. 
Okay. Is there a bathroom? Uh, Sorry. I think so. I'll, I'll verify that, but I, I think there is. Um, again, I, I've, I've only been in there a couple of times. And how about in the existing studio? Just if you're going to have the, I would imagine if this for my property, if you're going to have a, an area that you're designating as a, um, with the fireplace and the couches on the east side of the property, right outside of the studio, then that would be the a, a logical place to uh, use lavatories. Would that be? Uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll check. I'm pretty sure there must be okay. a, a bathroom in this area. This area here that is outside the existing studio. This is where the ping pong table, the outdoor ping pong table is. It's it's all act, activity type of things. Every time I've been there, this existing studio really has been used mostly as storage, as far as I've seen. But we'll we, we will get you the information on on what's being you know what exactly is going on in in, in both of these, and we'll get that written down. Okay, thanks. Appreciate that. So I think our our last real set of concerns had been about the, or our strongest set of concerns had been about the um, mitigation area. And I think the um, the plan now shows that they're not, uh, in, in, they're, they are actually using more area for mitigation, not interplanting, not depending on interplanting as a major um, mitigation. Um, so that makes me much more comfortable with this. I, I would, um, I guess I would start by asking Dave if he thought that this would be something that um, at this point would be uh, a, something that you'd be comfortable with seeing go administrative. And then I will ask the board if they would consider that. Yeah, we're comfortable with that at this point. The mitigation has been expanded. It seems to satisfy the, the concerns. Um, we're definitely comfortable with it going administrative. Um, one thing we didn't talk about tonight, and I, I know that um, Jerry and Alan are uh, aware of this, but there's, there is a state wetland permit necessary. Um, and um, I guess there has to be a public hearing for the wetland permit unless the planning board decides to waive that. So I'm just throwing those, those two things out there. Yeah, so by going administrative, we would basically waive the, the need for a public hearing. Um, yep. So yeah, we, would ask, we would ask the board to do that. Uh, it's, it's a type two action, exempt action. Uh, the variances, 10 of them were granted by the zoning board with no neighborhood opposition. In fact, the only affected neighbor to the west uh, supported the application. Um, and so we would ask you to waive the public hearing uh, and to refer this uh, to Kellard session to handle administratively. They're gonna be involved, uh, uh, Jan and, and, and Dave and Joe, they're, they're gonna be involved in the percolation soil testing. They're gonna be involved in the construction details of the stormwater chambers and everything else. So I think it would make sense if the board is comfortable with the overall mitigation plan. So um, perhaps Jerry, I could ask you to stop screen sharing so I can see people and, and maybe talk with people, you know, a little more on this, but um, you know, I, I, I would, um, uh, and I guess perhaps I see John now. So I don't know if I should ask for the CAC if there's any um, further comments that the CAC might have on this. No, our main concern was the expanded mitigation and the plan that appears to have it. So I think we're satisfied with that. Great. Okay. Um, and, you know, I do know that Jan will come back to us if he sees issues going on. I, I know that there are still some, some items that have to get addressed. Um, like some of the stormwater issues and, and so forth. But I, um, I would look for any indicate of, well, uh, if we need a motion. Yes, Jerome. Uh, I would move that we move this to administrative approval and waive the public hearing for wetlands. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you, Maureen. 
Okay, um, so this is a motion, so I will pull the board. Um, so Jerome? Yes. Charlene? Yes. Greg? Yes. Maureen? Yes. And I also say uh, yes, so the motion to make this administrative has um, has passed. Oh, and I see Jan has joined us. So, you know, he's here to hear that he's got work, more work. Um, but um, so I think with that, unless there's anything else, um, thank you for, for all that's been done um, and for the, the um, ex expanding some of these, the mitigation for us so we could get this done and move it to administrative. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter and Annette, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, the next item on our agenda is calendar number 09-21WP, the Gorton Residence at 22 Gilbert Road in South Salem, New York. This is the application for the construction of a rain garden and um, mitigation for the modified seawall. Um, and I thought I saw Laura Gorton on, uh, yes. And then um, if there's someone uh, who is representing, yes, go ahead, Jan. Len oh. Tyshurst is here as well for the applicant. Okay. Yes. Hello, Madam Chair, Glenn Tyshurst, landscape architect. Um, Laura was, I know, was having a problem getting on. So is she connected? Yes. Great. So um, we've been brought in recently um, Lara's uh, selling the house and during the final inspection process, <clears throat> it was discovered that uh, the, the uh, rain garden that was designed and approved back in I believe 09 had not been uh, installed. Um, also in that final report, there was a portion of the seawall where there was a notch. Um, I don't know if I can sh share my screen, I can try. Um, let's see here. You see that? No. no. No, but my my internet is the slowest, so I'd be the last to see it. But no, I don't see it. Let me try that again. Still no? No. I'm sorry. Um, if you do have the packet with you, there's a notch um, along a seawall that was filled in at one point. Um, and again, I'm not sure when that occurred. There was a repair done on the wall. And uh, that ultimately was, um, uh, there was a section filled in. I know there was some concern about um, um, how that was filled in. So the repair of the wall, uh, we're trying to develop a detail for that to see kind of what had occurred. As I understand it, it was a sort of a catch-all um, where there was a notch that as debris got blown across the lake. Um, uh, am I still on? Yeah. Yes. Great. I can, um, I can share my screen. I have, I have great. one. I could put it up if you want. That'd be great. Thank you. Yes, I was, I was looking for it on my. <clears throat> so this is the, uh, the notch that he was talking about. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, so the seawall uh, running along the lake used to, if you just follow my cursor, did this, this little strange rectangle was, was lake. Um, and as a course, uh, during the course of construction, they straightened this wall out and this got filled in. And then the, 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 um, the, the rain garden, which was part of the original approval, wasn't installed. Everything else, um, the renovation to the home, the driveway relocation was done absolutely to plan. 
Uh, but when we did our final inspection to close out the permit, was, which was issued in 09 before, you know, under our prior uh, wetland inspector, um, the rain garden wasn't installed and we noticed this, um, the wall was, was straightened. So uh, given the fact that the permit expired and these features are within 50 feet of the lake, um, it required planning board review. That's right. So that area was about 200 square feet, I believe. And so the mitigation shown on that plan adjacent to that area is about 450 square feet. And I did uh, later today, in the late, late in the afternoon, I did forward, Jan, I'm sure he hasn't had a chance to look at it, a more updated version of this where we've extended that mitigation planting to the south and also provided access, an opening, so um, uh, the clients can access the dock. Um, so there is an opening there. So when he has a chance to look at that, he'll see that. Um, so we will be doing some soil testing for the rain garden. So uh, we wanna make sure that's taken care of. Uh, we wanna make sure that the mitigation planting is appropriate along the seawall to mitigate any uh, potential impacts where the uh, notch was. Um, it will re provide a buffer pretty much along the whole stretch of the water front, uh, which I think will be beneficial. Um, so we're just sort of anxious to try to get it wrapped up. Um, I know um, um, Lara's anxious to, to sell the house. It's in the process of uh, being sold. And this is a, one of the last things we wanna get uh, sort of buttoned up. Okay, yes, I, I um... I haven't seen the new plan that says it extends further along the wall, but I did look at some aerials and it looked like there's sort of a grassy slope down to the, to the wall there. And Correct. to me, you know, if you can, if you could extend the, you know, some kind of um, something that would, you know, filtration garden, wetland, uh, you know, plantings, ground cover that would, be better than lawn to keep the any runoff from going right into the lake. I think that would be a much improved um, plan. So yes, I'm really glad to hear that you're doing that. That that would have been yeah. something I would have looked for. Um, so I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So no, we agree. Does. Anyone else have any questions or observations on this? Um, uh, let's see, Jan, would this be something that you might consider um, com be comfortable doing administratively? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we had some minor comments, which we'll work out with Glenn and he's already made progress in, in resubmitting a, a mitigation plan that addressed one of our, our so absolutely no problem. And hearing no other comments from anyone, um, I guess I would look for a motion to make this um, project administrative. I'll make a motion to handle this matter administratively. Thank you, Greg. A second, oh, Charlene, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, I will poll the board. Um, Charlene? Yes. Greg? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Jerome, where'd you go? Right here. There, there yes. you are, <laughs> Jerome. Yes? Yes. Okay, and I also say yes, so the um, motion carries. This will be... Um, done administratively and obviously again if there's a any issues um, Jan as it goes forward we'll we'll hear from you but meanwhile um, I think this gets this um, handled and and hope it will close out quickly for you thank you very much we look forward to it okay thank you thanks everybody bye-bye okay um, so and the the next item on the agenda is calendar number 13-21 WP. This is the Strauss residence at 399 Pound Ridge Road in South Salem, New York. 
Um, this is an application for the construction of a sunroom and a patio. And I see, I guess, Bob Ebert on, I, to represent the, the uh, applicant. That's correct. My name is Bob Ebert, Cross River Architects, and I'm representing uh, Ted and Janice Strauss. Uh, this property is at uh, 399 Pound Ridge Road. It's a, a 2.58 acre parcel, and this is a historical property. This, uh, the house on the property is uh, on the state and uh, uh, federal national register of historic places. And the Strausses take that uh, responsibility of keeping the property in the house uh, uh, in pristine condition very seriously. Uh, what the proposal is right now, I'll share my screen if it's all right with you. Sure. Uh, let's see here. Um, There we go. Uh, the, the property, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit for you here so you can see a little, see a little bit more of the property. But this is the south corner of the property. There's a sign on the, on the road that says Peaceable Kingdom. Uh, might help you identify the property if you're familiar with it. But uh, the, uh, we're working on the south property. This is the existing house. There's a garage here and a garage here. And there's an existing uh, small uh, workshop that's uh, on the property right now. It's uh, 10 by 17 sitting in this corner, south corner of the property. Let me zoom back in a little bit uh, here. So um, there's also a current deck. It's shown by these dashed lines right here. There's a, a 10 by 10 deck. It's not in very good shape right now. Um, and it's about 10 feet away from the existing uh, workshop. Uh, again, talking historically a little bit, there's a stream that's on this property, comes down and meanders, it goes through uh, through the, the underside of the workshop. Now that uh, workshop was originally a, a milk house when this uh, uh, property was farmed, a uh, dairy farm, they would store the milk in the stream to keep it cool. So this was the originally the, uh, the milk house and that's in very good shape uh, right now. It's in, uh, but there's a, a little spring house that was up here that's collapsed and that's, uh, that's gone from the property. The stream continues under the property and um, and goes through a headwall, stone headwall here into a culvert uh, that runs through a metal pipe that runs down to another headwall, gets exposed for another bit, and then again back into uh, uh, through a stone headwall into a metal pipe, and then back out and into the swale near the road. This is uh, Pond Ridge Road here, Route 124. The septic is is here uh, located here. The driveway stops back at on this part, so there's really no traffic that comes into this por portion of the property now. On the, uh, on the south border, there's some uh, very tall evergreen trees that, that come along uh, you know, the property line here uh, and uh, border, the, uh, border the stream. So what's proposed? We're proposed, uh, proposing to build a, um, in this location, a um, uh, 12 by 17 one story sunroom and a 10 by 12 deck with a pergola over it um, next to it. And this would adjoin the north side of the uh, existing workshop building. These will be built on piers um, and uh, then we'll take the roof drainage off to a, a, um, a Cultec recharger you know, on, on this uh, portion of the property. Uh, we really don't wanna touch much of this property. We wanna do as, as little as we can to, to affect the property. Um, now we do, we are disturbing about 500 square feet when we do this. And so we would uh, uh, provide a planting where the stream is exposed in these areas within about five feet of the stream. Now we, we did not get the mitigation plan done before the uh, smill date, but we, we did do it since. And we submitted that to Jan and, and mostly it's uh, ferns that we're putting in that area. And I don't think he had any, uh, uh, comments with regard to the mitigation. Um, and that's really the, the scope of what we're proposing. Okay, so I think the obvious question which you might have answered is, is why is this going on the workshop and not closer to the house or, you know, which is further away from the wetland? Um, is there 
is there a particular, you know, um, I, is it not going on the house because it, that's historic or c could you just explain a little bit about what's, what's. Yes, yes that's okay. exactly correct. The house is, is, uh, is uh, protected by that uh, uh, historic register. So we can't touch the outside of the house. And really we wanna leave that as a, um, let's say an isolated structure so that it stays historically uh, correct. So that you, when you're looking at that historical structure, um, it you know it uh, it's not encumbered by this new construction that we're doing. So that's why we're putting it next to the spring house, um, making it part of that structure, so that it it uh, you know it it clears it clears the existing building. That's that's the idea. So what it stays out of view of that building? Is the workshop currently used for? For what? There's uh, tools in there. Uh, he uses it as a, a wood shop. Okay. So, um, I mean, you mentioned that there's a couple other garages. I'm I'm looking, I'm looking to see is there a reason or a way to get this further away from the the wetland? Um, and and I know there's garages on the other side. Is it? Uh, was that at all looked at as a possible way place to put this, or is this really where they they really want it? Well, the um, the property bends away, as you can see, uh, from the from the road a little bit, and there's some larger trees in here. So this is the view. This is where you have the view, um, uh, you know, on the property, and you get some beautiful sunshine in this location. That's why they. They hang out on that deck that's there now. It's not in very good shape, but uh, uh, anyway, that, that, that's the reason we put it there. It's, that's the view. Okay, yeah, I guess because the, the area for the septic system was cleared, so it's got, it's open there and you can, I can, I guess I can see that, okay. Exactly, yeah. And again, we're putting it on piers to make as little impact as, as we can on the on the property. And will there be an opening from, I wasn't clear, will there be an opening from the sunroom into the workshop? No, right now they have no need for that. We talked about putting a door in. I assumed they'd want a door, but they said really there's no reason they would never go back and forth between the two, so no. So the reason for the attachment to the workshop is just to keep the buildings closer, I mean, to have something to anchor the building, sort of as a. Uh, yes, visually anchor it, not. not uh, yeah, visually anchor. Yeah. You know, structurally, but yeah, so that it doesn't seem like there's you know lots and lots of uh, small buildings on the property that that might look cluttered. Okay. Um. Yeah, Jerome here. Yes, Jerome. Bob, I wonder if you've done a sun travel uh, plan of, of this. Seems to me the deck itself is just going to get to due westerly uh, sun. Um, and I, I wonder if that's optimal for, uh, for that intention. Um, that's what they like about it. Uh, that's okay. when they sit out there uh, in the evening, four o'clock, five o'clock in the evening. And that's okay. what they like about it. Very good. Okay. Um, so Jan, you had some, uh, I think we got a comment letter from you on this, right? Yes, we issued a comment right. letter on this. Um, right. Obviously before the board for the implement application, uh, there's no other approvals uh, required by the board. Um, we, I'd like to, I haven't been to the site yet and I'd like, I, I would like to visit it when the snow clears just to get an appreciation of the stream, what it uh, consists of. Um, we did get a wetland mitigation plan um, for Mr. Janig. It, it looked, uh, you know, the planting plan was completely acceptable. It's what we would have expected. Um, you know, given the proximity of the improvement to the stream um, you know, they're, they're providing the, the minimum requirement, the one-to-one -one ratio. Um, 
if there was anything else that could be done, and again, I haven't been to the site, but if there's any potential for opening up the, the culverted section, if that makes any sense, perhaps that could be considered again, but I, I, haven't, I haven't been there to see, you know, why it was culverted or, or what it, you know, really what's going on out there. Uh, but that, that should be a consideration. Um, there's some additional zoning information that needs to be added to the plan, bulk zoning table, um, zoning setbacks, uh, calculations for uh, coverage. Uh, we do need an updated survey uh, and just reviewing the plot plan to like a, an aerial, it looked like there might have been some some expansions of asphalt areas and such. Um, so, so it does need to be based off an updated survey. The topo, uh, I believe, is Westchester County GIS, and that's fine for something you know of this nature. Uh, we do not need a topographic survey, but an existing uh, condition survey would be be required. Um, a lot of architectural information was submitted. I did not see a floor plan. Um, I might have missed it, but uh, if it hasn't been prepared, it should. Um, the the limits of disturbance should also include um, construction access um, and any utilities that are going to be run down there, um, if if any. Um, there is a proposal for. Um, a small uh, stormwater infiltration unit that's very close to the deck. Uh, we would look to um, have the athlete conduct the soil testing to make sure that's a suitable location. Um, it does, I, I would caution the applicant or the, end, uh, the architect to look at the separation distances between the septic and the stormwater and the, the construction of the, the addition to the septic to make sure they satisfy all health department um, setback requirements um yeah any any electric or water or gas being run down uh to to the building um and you know just designing the the, the drainage system you know we'll need to see details and, and make sure it's it's being designed appropriately that was that was mainly it um we should get a referral to the building inspector um, I did have, uh, it looks like they'll, they'll meet the requirement that the town has a 600 square foot um, maximum on a detached accessory building, but sounds like this is going to be well under that. Um, but the, the building inspector should, should take a peek and just give us a quick zoning compliance review once we have the zoning information. Mm -hmm. right. um, Jan, do we have to um make sure there's room for a, an expansion area for the septic system or is that i don't well, know if, i mean if something's on piers uh, well i don't know i don't know what that if that's a concern well it would be a concern if this is being constructed within the designated expansion area that information hasn't been provided i don't know the date or you know how old the septic system is and if a an expansion area has been designated by the health department. It's good planning, you know, um, and the board has done this before, just, you know, if you did have a septic failure um, and you had to install a new septic, where could it go? And is this um, going to be preventing that from happening? Are there other locations that if they had to, they could um, install a septic? I know there's some slopes to the property, so that might be something you want to, you know, just have them look at. Um, you know, usually, you know, we can get uh, the applicant would generally submit um, the as built information that they receive from the health department on the existing septic system. Um, and that would generally identify if there's an expansion area designated already. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean think the, the well should be shown as well. Uh, I don't know if, if it is on the plan, but as, that's part of the as built that we need to see as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I that would, you know, that's sort of my question about um, part of the question about the location here is, is it closing off or, you know, what where would the expansion area go? Um, so I think that would be helpful. I also like your idea about daylighting the the culverted area of the stream, if that's, if if the topography or whatever caused it to get 
put into a culvert at the start um, isn't isn't too onerous. I mean, I think that's a great great idea. Um, and perhaps when you go visit, I don't know. Is you talked about a collapsed spring house? I don't. I'm assuming that that is not something that is a danger or you know that's sort of uh, a threat to the stream in any way. That it's um, it, by collapse, it's more like it's not useful as opposed to collapsed. It's it's eroding the stream in some way. <clears throat> it's been removed. Oh, it's been removed. Yeah. Ah, okay, great. Um, so. Maybe you can just take that off the plan then so it's just not. Sure, I, I know it was on the survey, which is why I indicated it. Uh, but, but it's been removed, uh, okay. Been removed, yeah. Um, so perhaps you can stop screen sharing for a second. Sure. Oh, if, if, you, if I may, um, I, I would be um, uh, opposed, I think, to exposing the, uh, the stream. Now you haven't seen it yet, but uh, the head walls, the stone head walls are in great shape. This was built again, um, uh, well over a hundred years ago. Um, so my, uh, my take on it is keep the property historically accurate, keep it as uh, pristine as it is, rather than sort of trying to make it into something it's not. Um, the culverts were put in to allow the farmers to draw, drive their tractors across the stream. So that was the purpose for the uh, uh, several culverts that were, that were uh, put in there. And so, uh, you know, it's been there uh, well over a hundred years. So uh, my attitude would be uh, keep it historically accurate. Okay, I'll ask, I mean, ask Jan to do it. If it's, if the culvert has been there a hundred years, it might not be in great shape anyway. I mean, I, I so. Is it uh, pipe, uh, Bob? Does it have a pipe? Uh, that there looks to be a pipe in there. Yes. Uh, you could see the head wall and then the clay pipe at the end of it, but that's about all I can see. Yeah. Clay. Okay. Um, well, it sounds like this should get, um, I'd look for consensus maybe to refer this to the building inspector as Jan suggested. Not yeah, That'd be fine. Sure. Once okay. it once you have the zoning information. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, is this something that anybody feels we need to do a site walk for in the snow? I don't think we need a site walk, but are we, are we going to get some sort of a mitigation plan or do we have it? Or I don't know if we've received it yet, or I don't know if it came out in the last day or so. Yeah, it was, uh, it was received. I received it via email a week or so ago. Right. Perhaps. Okay. Came in after the, the submission deadline. Right. I no, I, I got that. So I'm just wondering if we should review that before we do it, before we make any other decisions, especially yeah. now, you know. Yes. Yeah, you know, because yeah. I think a, a, a site a site walk now is not going to be too productive. So maybe we can see what they're putting down on paper first. Right. Well, I'd, I'd like to have um, Jan get a chance to see it. I mean, maybe we're going to have some warmer weather, but there's a lot of snow to melt. So. But um, I'd, I'd like to do that, and perhaps we can um, ask for this to come back in in March um, if you think you're going to get a chance to go out and see it. Um, and if not, well, I, I guess I'd say let's look at it in March, and then if you can't visit, perhaps we'll adjourn it till April, um, because I think it's important to get Jan's view of what's going on here. Okay. I do that. Would you expect the applicant to resubmit to address comments between that time frame, or you just want to put it on the calendar and I'll do a site inspection? Well, I think we do need some of the, like as you said, to refer to the building inspector. We need to have a um, the zoning on it. Unfortunately, I think our submission date is like Thursday, Thursday. or Friday, so. I don't know if there's a chance to get that done. Um, and again, uh, I think it would be important to figure out if there's a 
expansion area that's designated and to make sure we're not on top of it um, with with this, you know, with the new area here. The expansion area is west, west of the existing system and downhill of the existing system. West. Okay, towards the road. Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, we'll show them. Yeah. Well, I'm so, sure. I, I'm sure, I could get to the site uh, between now and and the next meeting. Um, I'd be happy to uh, set a meeting up with Bob and and walk it with him. Great. So I think that's what we should plan to do. Yeah. And hear from any any updates. Um, I think I feel much better that that the expansion area we're not on top of it with this application. So that's good. Um, okay. Um, so we'll get more information on this. We'll refer it to the building inspector. Jan will report back in March and we see where we go. Great. Thank you. Appreciate your time tonight. Oh, thank you. Okay, so the next item on our agenda is just the minutes from January 19th, 2021. I move they be accepted as uh, submitted. Second. Thank you. So a move by Jerome, seconded by Greg. Um, and I will pull the board. So Charlene. Yes. Greg. Yes. Maureen. You're muted. <laughs> She's nodding yes, but we want it on tape. Yes. <laughs> Jerome. Yes. And I also um, support that. Um, I, I guess I should say just on the record uh, that we had scheduled a site walk for three Beaver Pond Lane um, at our last meeting. And we uh, canceled that because of the snow cover and feeling that we would not be able to see uh, the topography and the, the issue that, um, that would be out there. And that was at Jan's recommendation that we cancel it. Um, again, I'm not, not confident that we'll be done with snow. So I'm not sure that uh, we should, we could try to schedule a site walk for that again. Um, and because we are having warmer weather and cancel it if we have to, or we can decide not to. The uh, next meeting is one week sooner than the gap between January and February meeting. So that being the case, why don't we just see where we are on March 16th? Okay. This way we won't be this way we won't be waiting as long, in other words, as we did with this last uh, right. And I, I would agree this this matter's still at a very preliminary stage. Jan and I are going to be speaking with um, uh, the parties to whom the violation was issued. So why don't we just put it over to March and make a site visit uh, decision at that point in time? That'd be great. Okay. Yeah. So with that, I'd look for, oh, the next meeting date, as we have just discussed, is March 16th, 2021. So with that, I guess I'd look for a motion to adjourn. Unless motion to adjourn. Thank you, Greg. Second. By Jerome. Any discussion? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good idea. <laughs> Charlene. Yes. Greg. Yes. Maureen. You're muted. <laughs> Yes. yes. <laughs> Jerome. Yes. <laughs> and I also say yes. So thank you all. Good night. We're Good night. at 9.24 p.m. Thank Good you. Night. Good night all. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.